We've completed all of the non-destructive and visual inspections of the vessel. We've done a full comprehensive visual over all areas inside the vessel and in the annulus that surrounds it. And we've also completed all the non-destructive examinations of the wall, of the weld at the bottom of the wall, and even behind the baffle plate feature. We've also completed six vertical scans of the full height of the vessel from, from the area of interest at the bottom right to the top of the vessel. And this has given us a full picture on what's the condition of the vessel now. So we've now reached a really important milestone, which is to determine precisely the extent of repair. So we know now there are six specific locations inside the vessel that require the weld buildup to be applied. And part of repair is preparing the vessel to receive the weld. So it's a weld preparation activity. There's a thin layer of oxide on the inside of the vessel surface, and that needs to be removed in order to do the welding onto the bare metal. So we've developed three sets of tooling in order to remotely go into the vessel and clean off that surface layer and to prepare the vessel to receive the weld. This is one of the tools that's being used for cleaning the inside surface of the vessel to remove that oxide layer. And in order to operate it, we go through three different levels of training for the people who are required to be on the reactor face performing the work, in this case, to clean the inside of the vessel. Working together with all the groups within AACL and with the external vendors is really important to our success. We've got a great partnership going with several outside suppliers that are developing the tooling to do the repair and to help us conducting the cleaning operation inside the vessel. It's all happened in some cases in six weeks, which is very fast in this kind of environment where we have to ensure safety and nuclear reliability on all the components so that we can assure ourselves that the tool won't fail in any manner that will cause damage to the vessel or any components so that we won't lose foreign materials inside the vessel and so again that it'll perform all the requirements that are necessary. But there's nothing like a real test on the real material. So we've developed tooling in order to take some samples from the vessel wall and subject that to materials analysis and to weld tests. And this is the last piece of the puzzle in terms of convincing ourselves that we've covered all the bases, that we've determined uh, all the parameters necessary to execute welds that will produce a quality repair and take the reactor back to service and isotope production for the years to come. So although we've got a detailed plan, we are facing challenges almost every day. We have to adjust and react, bring in additional resources, turn on new streams of activities altogether. We've adhered to the schedule that was laid out months ago, and that schedule covered the design, the development, assembly, commissioning of the remote tooling for repair and for cleaning and other operations. So we've adhered to that schedule, and we're on the cusp now of moving into the repair stage. We have to be on top of all of the activities that are critical to the sequence of operations to return to service in the first quarter of 2010.